Hey, everybody. Yeah. Are you all ready to help teach Amy Mann how to be a nerd? Yeah. I'm going to turn things over to your moderator, Ted Leo. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Thank, thank, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, thank you, Amy. You should know before we begin that this is not some roast kind of thing. This was actually initially uh, Amy's idea uh, in conversation with Paul and then, and then later me because uh, in our... Uh, Everything here is happening with affirmative consent. Exactly. <laughs> uh, according to the uh, Joker Cruz Code of Conduct. And um, this being our, our, our second year uh, on the ship, you know, we were, we were very moved uh, last year by the whole experience. And um, uh, what happened over the, <laughs> over the years that uh, that that we've uh, been working together? Um, it's become a, a really big part of our uh, repartee that one of us is nerdier than the other. Um, and it occurred to me that that the uh, you know uh, one of the ways to, to sort of uh, feel included in, in any scene is to be able to uh, to banter within the language of that. You know, subculture. Um, so everybody ha probably has a different goal for tonight. My my goal is simply, or a good outcome for me would be to be able to get Amy to a place where at some point in the near future, if we're uh, on the road and you say, "Hey, you know, pull over. I got to use the can," uh, I and I say to you, "Boy, should get you a still suit." <laughs> you, you can then not only know what I mean, but you could respond by saying, well, if you know anything about still suits, you know that uh, the recycling is actually powered by uh, motion, so me just sitting here in one of the cars is going to change my <laughs> Well, this one kind of did, it came about because I felt, I feel like my nerd credentials are really lacking, and you know I want to feel part of this because it is I love being on this crew so much. And so, in discussions with Paul, I, I, I said, you know, I feel like there should be a curriculum or syllabus for someone like me. But, and, and then I and then I feel like there should be an equation that uh, maybe some things are have sort of a higher nerd power than others. The other question is, are there some things that detract from nerddom that, sub that sub subtract. Uh, so that's that's uh, you've developed. A, you've well, developed this, this was hurriedly hurriedly scrawled together yeah. about an hour. We ago. put the best mathematical minds on, on, the, <laughs> on the boat uh, together. Those minds being, being Paul Storm and Jonathan. I, I was there for color commentary. Um, and uh, some people are already objecting to the math. <laughs> Let's explain. Let's explain. I'm sitting right. So there's, there's, a, we have a, we have a. Uh, the number we are searching for at the end of the night is an actual nerd. Right. Now, ner actual nerd is the product of P, which is perceived nerd. It's Amy's self perception. Some. Amy's self perception of. Some. Some. Excuse me, some. Sorry. Can you see? That's why I have all of my editors here. Hypercorrection is an important part of it. <laughs> it is the law of um actually. He <laughs> <laughs> is perceived nerd. Hang on, we need a microphone over here. Hey, we'll, we'll get it over here. As soon as I'm done talking, we're going to hand it over to Mike. P is because if we get Mike starts talking, we're never getting out of this room. <laughs> P is second cardinal trait of a nerd hogging the mic. <laughs> P is perceived nerd, which is a number somewhere between negative five and positive five on this bell curve, which we refer to as the decent scale. Yeah, each of those numbers is one point dexter on the uh, decent scale. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where zero is where someone perceives the average person's level of nerd on a particular. Item is. Negative is the. Well, so here, for example, zero on the decent scale might be I've seen the Star Wars movies. Yeah. I've, I've never wanted to love sports more than this. Movie. <laughs> Negative five is I have never seen a film in my life. And positive five is please let me show you my manifesto about IG88. <laughs> Actually, about the averages of large amounts of. Oh, okay. For the purposes of 
numbers, we're looking at lots of generalities here. Lots of, I also object to the I also object to the slope. I mean, the slope on the front end is clearly positive. The slope on the negative end just peters out. Like it doesn't even touch the bottom of the chart. How are you doing so far, Amy? How do you feel? <laughs> Welcome to the tribe. It's harmless. How about, I'm, 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 I can't correct anyone. I have numbers dumb, like... Uh, That's okay, so are we, and we made no, this guy. Clearly. No, no. <laughs> That's not how numbers work. <laughs> oh, is, zero up there. This is a like beautiful equation. You have to write out for the purpose of this planning. This is like, this is like, this is like, when, this is like Skynet getting sentenced. This is like real-time Wikipedia. This is a, this is... You haven't even finished explaining it. <laughs> Explode. So what we have represented on stage are, are four, you know, nebulous lanes of, of what would you call it, Paul? Nerd, don't, nerd yeah. expertise. Um, and so what you see, O, is is uh, observed nerdness. That's objective nerdiness. That's what... Based on the scientific data we will collect. Exactly. And uh, so O is the sum of C, which represents comic books which are represented on this stage by Matt Fraction and uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick, of course. Uh, G, of course, is the gaming lane, which is represented by Mr. Mike Sonker right here. Oh. Object to the lower case in a second. Uh, L is for literature, Norgay Jemison, who's here with us. Sort of things, a sort of catch-all for other media, mainly TV and movies, we hope, uh, represented here by Mr. John Hodgman. And there's a text back there that um, I'm going to, uh, you know, add either a negative uh, or positive number two in each of these uh, categories based on what I think I've, I've witnessed in our, our time together, things I know that you like that may overlap and you don't realize they do with a certain thing. Uh, certain cool factors that might detract <laughs> from your own now, uh, now we need an explanation or a description of what is cool. We're going to do that in quantify that. Okay, well... And is one, does one cancel out the other? Well, they can. can. It can be a negative cool? or positive value. This discussion yes, yes. right here is already raising your X factor. <laughs> and also playing to us. Because we like being called cool by you. <laughs> so we need a starting point. We were talking about this briefly with Amy uh, earlier earlier tonight. Just, again, we know this is all arbitrary. Just go with us. But on a scale somewhere between negative five and positive five, with zero being the average person, whatever that means to you, what number would you use, what integer would you use to describe yourself how nerd are you for to determine your perceived nerd? I, it, I feel like it's pretty low. I think I think it's like negative two. Okay. No, because I got I saw, I saw the first, I saw the first movie when it came out. I don't remember much about it. Uh, I have never seen any of the Star Trek movies, but. <laughs> The collective intake of breath in this room just produced the oxygen level. Often it asks. Uh, but I, I am pretty conversant with the uh, the original series. Now, so you're more nerd than... You're, so you, generally you feel you are more nerd than some, but less nerdy than most. Not as nerdy as I would like to be. Okay. That's, that's, what, that's what the purpose of this is. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we now have a P of negative 2, and now we have to determine O, and here I turn it back over to 10. Well, we're going to determine O by going through the categories, talking a little bit with each of our representatives here, hopefully, hopefully engaging uh, them in some discussion with Amy herself, and, uh, and then when we're going to arrive at a number, and we're going to open it up to the floor, we're going to arrive... That's going to be a great idea. <laughs> if we get oh, beyond C before the end of this... <laughs> I'll be amazed. We're gonna, so you know I'm going to. Then we're going to we're going to arrive at a second number, and we're going to de determine the delta, and that will determine the efficacy of this number. <laughs> Way to use those terms you were asking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the 
room now. Can I just point out that John looks like he's gone to his happy place? John's just like a million, million. Like he's in Cheyenne, Wyoming or something. I offered him the microphone back and he hasn't taken it. <laughs> Matt, you, Matt, you got the mic. Let's let's start with you and Kelly Sue. Now, I want to I want to establish that uh, in the as far as comic books go, I actually know that Amy draws a lot. She draws comics. We've we've actually drawn some comics together. She's been doing it for a long time. She's a fan of graphic novels, but not so much serial comic books. No, no right? superhero stuff. I did, so I feel like that doesn't count. It's all like you know. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> Experts interact with her first. <laughs> what, I, what I would love to listen, what I would love to listen from you guys before we before we just start, you know, shouting things things out at, at each other is within the world of comic books. What do you consider a, a tourist? What do you consider a nerd? What do you think your um, perceptions of of, uh, of how things you know have have? Uh, what is the value of, of like an old Jack Kirby? Thing versus a sort of new, you know, edgier indie thing, and and how do you see it fitting in? And what would you recommend uh, to get Amy started down the road to appreciation of this? Well, I'm a, a, a fan of uh, if this, try that, rather than you know, you're you're a girl, you're like this, you know, you are. A, a, all complex beings, we all have tastes and experiences. I don't I feel like any time a comic book generates a piece of media that earns billions, plural, of dollars, we are outside of the realm of nerd. Yeah. There's nothing really specialized about it. It's like, oh, no, I listen to rock music. And like, it's, <laughs> it's nothing, uh, all right there, uh, 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 Marlon Brando, have a seat. Uh, it's, it's, it's not terribly, uh, as, you know, Billions and billions of dollars come out of these things, not to get all singing, but like, oh, there's nothing underground about it. There's nothing, you know, it's just a matter of taste. Like, okay, superheroes are not your jam. Great. There's so many. Although I bet we could find the superhero that's your jam. We could, <laughs> sure. But, you know, at the same time, it's, it's like, um, if someone doesn't enjoy a particular kind of cuisine, why don't we go find a cuisine you like? Instead of like, no, no, you just haven't had the Ethiopian dish that appeals to you. Let's keep shoveling Ethiopian food at you. Like, maybe... I, I feel like you've hit on an interesting point where it, it can't be too mainstream. Yeah. I, 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 Although, Star Wars is pretty mainstream. Yeah. Star Wars is extraordinarily mainstream. When the movie has earned, is what it has earned, around, when Deadpool, for fuck's sake, has earned, <laughs> earned, 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 earned it doesn't play anymore. Is that the sequel to Deadpool? Is yeah. that really? <laughs> Deadpool, for fuck's sake. Deadpool, for fuck's sake. <laughs> literally just earned it. <laughs> it's gonna open in Easter. <laughs> um, I'm, 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 you know, it would be like somebody saying, "Yeah, I, I heard an Eagles song. I'm not into music. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not listen to the Eagles. Let's find other things." So, you know, I would, I was, I'm a big fan of. Well, what, what, what was the last great novel you read, or what was the last movie you saw that really? You know, that really you were excited about was the last record you couldn't stop listening to. Like, let's, I, I like kind of building outwards from there. And uh, comics like novels, like music, like food, like literally anything. There's so many, such a panoply of choice. That so, Amy, what was the last great comic yeah. you read? <laughs> but, but I think, like, like, no, no, I'm going to jump in that. But just oh, like, I, 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 a very special, uh, we're in a moment now where uh, the role of the curator. It's kind of yeah. very big right now. Yeah. Uh, in a world where you know we have heads of major television studios complaining that there's too much television. I would argue there's too much shitty television. Yeah. And what we need is someone to go, oh no, no, you should check this out. We need this panel. We need we need exactly. <laughs> well I, I would I would I would not mind uh, having Kelly Sue's kind of kind of bend that uh, toward the superhero side of things. I'm I've been obsessed with uh, Marvel's Agents of Shield as of late, uh, but I'm not I, I don't think that's necessarily it's the not case. The right amount of this place for you. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about Jessica Jones? Guess who just? Well, that's, that's what I, was up to. I don't think that's. I don't think Agents of Shield is the right place for Amy to jump in. But maybe we can we can find the right place for her to jump in. Yeah. Maybe it's Jessica Jones. I mean, I think like the the, the the question I think you asked first was what what is tourist and what is nerd. Yeah. Um, and, and I think like 
Uh, tourist is, is actually the assumption that comics are all superheroes, right? Um, or, or, or that, oh, you're a girl, you're like Sandman, or like that kind right, of... Right, yeah. Well, but, they can't um, be adult. They can't be... For, they all have to work. Right, right, yeah. Right, right. Right, which is hilarious because, in fact, almost none of them are for kids. And this is a real problem. Um, yeah, it, it's it's incredibly difficult to find comics for kids. But um, so, and, but like, there's 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 sort of good nerd and there's bad nerd. And there's there's like 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 the the peak nerd is uh, is the Wednesday comics person. Right. That is. That is. Who has a poll list? Yeah. Right. Can, okay. Can, can you explain that to me, man? A poll list. Oh God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stick with me here. Okay. Okay. So our system is kind of broken. I'm not going to explain why I could, but it would eat up the rest of the panel. We can talk about it another time if you're interested. Please, please explain it so I don't have to say anything. <laughs> um, but uh, our, our system is sort of broken, so uh, the way that comics are, are sold, oh god, pre-ordering in five minutes or less, um, it, it, there is a catalog that comes out, imagine if you were buying shoes like this, there's a catalog that comes out three months in advance. It describes the shoes, you don't get to try them on. <laughs> And you need to let your retailer know whether or not you're going to buy the shoes based on this description, and then you're stuck with them. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Also, you have a limited size box for your shoes. Yes. You can't actually get all the shoes you want. And some of the shoes that you order and commit to buying, they're just not going to show up. <laughs> and they might, also, they might yeah, be pumps. Also, sometimes <laughs> one shoe is going to fight another shoe. <laughs> for no discernible reason. <laughs> So, forget all that. <laughs> but let's talk about the alternate universe shoes. Uh, I'm going to uh, read so, so. all shoes. <laughs> now they're hats. Yeah. So, if you decided, for instance, that uh, uh, you'd read a little something about this comic book called Bitch Planet. Woo! Uh, written by. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, some broad. And, uh, and you're like, oh, uh, I think I would like to check that out. And I would like to ensure that I don't miss an issue. And you would set up what's called a pull list with your local retailer. And uh, you would give your retailer the titles that you would like to pick up when new issues come out every Wednesday. Now, <laughs> Bitch Planet doesn't come out every Wednesday, but new comics come out every Wednesday. And usually at most retailers you can go and pick them up about once a month and that's cool. So organization and obsession are a big part of this. Yes. 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 Well, well it's also it's also important to be a completist. Well although it, it was in the way that fins were important before we crawled out of the swamps. Right? Because yeah. now, if you have a smartphone, you have a comic shop in your pocket. And you can pretty much buy what you want whenever you want. And you don't have to be at a place at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. Right. Right? Uh -huh. But, but we were asked about Peak Nerd. Sure. Peak well, Nerd I, is my, Wednesday my, my, local comic I'm, shop. I'm, I'm, I'm yes ending that. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, uh, there is that. But now, we have, we have we have freed ourselves of, of, different, of, 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 of such clumsy things as time and space. <laughs> and you, just, you just buy a comic when you want on your phone. And I, and, 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 so... Why is that not peak nerd? Well, I'm, I, I'm suggesting that maybe this is now. Right. I'm suggesting that maybe, and, and it's, a, it's a, the dinosaur is very slow to realize, wait a minute, things are different. But I think any time you make a conscious choice, oh, oh, I gotta get that new comic, you have achieved peak nerd. Whether you do that on a phone, whether you go to a specific destination to do that. Showing up every, it, it's a weird ritual, it's a sort of... The funniest thing Mark Miller's ever said is on the internet, every day is free comic book day. <laughs> in, the way that, in the way that the internet has really hurt uh, uh, certain uh, musical choices and uh, things like that. But uh, I think anytime you peep nerd, it's like, oh, I, gotta get, I gotta read the next one. Like, that's it. Like, you know, that, that, that is, regardless of how you make the decision, rather than having someone force you. Mm -hmm. And the basics of uh, the comic book industry are, it's very different from books in that 
that because it is dominated so much by superheroes, um, it, it, the, the organizing principle is publisher, which is unlike any other. You don't, you don't go into the bookstore and you go, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the Random House section. Or over there by Ten Speed yeah. Press. I only, only listen to Warner Brothers records. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it, it's so, uh, Weirdly, that is how my, my industry works. Yeah. You know, like this might be a common thread. <laughs> yeah. Is that instead of organizing by human, we organize by loyalty. I do yeah. hope there is a lot of overlap because we are 23 minutes into this. Yeah. Year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, call, I'm gonna call time on, on, on this on this thing really quick, and we're gonna skip the recommendations part, and we're gonna throw that at the end because I want to get Nora in, in here right. to to actually be. Uh, you know, it, it was mentioned that this is different than the uh, than the book publishing. Um, again. Let's get let's let's not get into the recommendations right now, but just to establish some of Amy's bonus we'll later. Yeah, um, you know, I know that again, you're not a big current. Uh, you don't even know the difference between sides. <coughs> I think I do. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> One has Star, Star Trek is sci-fi. Star Wars is fantasy. Star Trek is a western. This is a person, though, who has made fun of, of my uh, 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 Tolkien nerddom by saying, live long and prosper. So, yeah. That's just being, me being a dick, though. That's just being a dick. Making fun of Tolkien, sort of deep nerd? Yeah. 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 That's why. Yeah. So, it's the same way, like, if you, use, you, sort of, you, have to have an, a, a, you have to have an allegiance to either Star Wars or Star Trek, um, and you can... See, this, this is this is something that this is this is part of the reason I want to get Nora in here because a lot of that kind of that kind of binary opposition it is very sportsy and it's very boy y to me and it's it's an aspect of it's an aspect of some of this that I think um, could you stop saying ass please because that's offensive. <laughs> uh, anyway, I would I would like to just, I'd like to just <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your 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 you know entree into into writing what you know what what you do and you know how you would possibly draw somebody like Amy you know into the fold. Okay, um, I'm I'm actually going to back up to what you said about how not specifically that, um, but so it sounds to me like like one of the defining characteristics of of a nerd in comic system is someone who has the passion and the dedication to, to establish a pull list, to follow the same characters obsessively over time. Yeah, yeah, to, to stay with it long enough for, for the big picture to become clear. So we're talking passion, we're talking long-term dedication. That's it. Yes. I, I'm just gonna say, I am, I am talking about the best to talk to about the literary side of nerdom because my, Tends to be kind of a fuck you to the traditional literary side. Yeah. But, um, this is why we want to. But I, I will say that that is the sole defining characteristic of Nerda. You find something you like, you, you, you immerse in it, you swim in it, you splash it everywhere, you find people that want to bathe in it with you. And that's basically it. Now, you can, you can, you can learn certain basic vocabulary, you can learn certain basic. Uh, uh, calling cards and things like that. Yes, it's a good idea to know your elves from your dwarves. Um, to understand that you don't toss the dwarves. To, to understand that you know a blaster is not the same thing as a phaser. But so long as you get those those very basic things down, and frankly, you know, there, there's a core problem that, with with a lot of this. You know, it's 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 a lot of fun to to have that phaser versus blaster argument. But on the other hand, there's a there's a gatekeepy aspect of that. And, and gatekeeping is worse. Um, so that's when you get people challenging each other on their degree of nerddom based on whether they know how to use the 20 sided die in the Dungeons and Dragons version third edition. Um, you know what are you so, pitching me? What? Are you pitching me? Possibly. <laughs> you know, so so what kind of books do you like to read? Uh, well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay. Why does it have to be a kind? 
There doesn't have to be a ton. Right? So, <laughs> who's your favorite? What was your last favorite book? Um, I read this uh, detective series by John D. McDonald. Um, I just read every single one of the 30, 30 series. Single one of Travis These are these are Travis. These are Travis McGee. Travis McGee. All right. So, if you read all of them, and by the way, they all have the same plot. <laughs> Does anything else out here always have the same plot that we absorb? Right. What right? could that be? So, yeah. So that's a real core indicator yeah. that you were able to get beyond book two of. Travis is hanging out with his alligator in his uh, in, in his uh, houseboat. Mm -hmm. Let's do that Wait, again. Wait, well, then... oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A houseboat well, with an alligator. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna preemptively declare that is nerdy as fuck. Absolutely. <laughs> So that's that. Uh, that's a five. That's uh, over N A F. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah. I, Nora, I agree that's N A F. But <laughs> so what you're defining as nerd dumb is the classic Chris Hardwickian principle. <laughs> it's not what you love; it's how you love it. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think. And, I mean, you are obviously a nerd for boxing. Yeah. Would, well, would, would you I, I agree? Have been, well, I have been at times. I mean, not... Right. not, not but if the antithesis of nerd is jockdom, as it is generally described, no. can you be a nerd for sports? Yes! yes. 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 Football! Yes! yes. I'm, not, I'm not asking this with any prejudice. I'm asking, like, I'm Nora, do you feel, I'm since you since you brought up the definition about, or you, you brought up this issue of it's the it's the, the, the completism and the uh, obsession and that sort of thing. Is it do, does the genre of the thing that you love mean anything to her? I, I do think the content matters in the sense of um, underdog. Death. If if you are engaging with stuff that the mainstream does not like, right. that the mainstream does not embrace and does not treat as <coughs> as. Uh, acceptable in, in, in common, right. then yeah, that's that's closer along the continuum of nerd than than anything else. Oh, but that's, that's, that's why that's why my favorite sports team mm -hmm. is the Hartford Whalers because hey, it's a hockey team who and he it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> it's not the best. Yeah, but I mean, you, oh, now who's gonna yell for uh, me? Yeah. <laughs> you've got Quidditch teams that legit play, that were inspired by a fantasy novel. So, you know, sports can be nerdy as fuck, yes. And let's be clear, the single nerdiest thing is not, in, not generally in this room, which is basketball statistics. <laughs> yeah. Basketball statistics. Yeah. Basketball statistics have conferences, yeah. right? There are, there, are, there are stat conferences, and stat heads are geekier than anybody in this room. 
So, so there's there's a trap here that's not just obsessiveness, but also exactly what Norris said, which is those guys aren't respected by actual basketball players. Right? They make themselves the underdogs. That's right. They pulled themselves out of the Jacques community. The Jacques community. <laughs> <laughs> They're all underwater explorers. <laughs> Are, are we trying to to universally uh, uh, define nerddom, or are we trying to establish a simple curriculum or basic talking points to make her conversant in point. like these basic avenues of nerddom as largely represented in this room? Well, it was well, initially supposed to be the latter, but honestly, the, the, what we've been doing is possibly a little more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> part of the issue that we're dealing with is that there cannot be a single curriculum. Because there, there's been the attempt for years and years and years to, to establish that there is this, this one true nerddom. And, and that one true nerddom has become increasingly defined and rarefied and narrowed down to the point that half the people in this room don't qualify. And, you know, here I am. Honestly, I'm the only true nerd here. <laughs> But you know, the thing is, I am a black woman who writes fantasy novels. That is about as weird as it gets, and I am a nerd like nobody's business. And yet I constantly have to defend and, and establish my credentials to be in a space like this. Because periodically I got people who want to challenge me on whether oh, Spock did what and blah blah blah. blah. So, um, and, and you see, you see again and again, people trying to challenge each other or trying to challenge those that they perceive as outsiders. Um, they want to codify and narrow down and harden the boundaries of what nerddom is. Yeah. And the thing is, nerddom is inherently fuzzy boundary. It's supposed to be fuzzy boundary. This is, yeah, it, it should be open. These are the people who, who can't find space in the mainstream. That should be lots and lots of people. That should not be a small codified group. Of people. What, what's weird about nerddom is that, uh, first of all, applaud. Yes. <laughs> it's a, you know, a, across all the different genres that it, it manifests in, nerddom is at once supposed to be as comforting as a lot of pop culture is to people because it's a distraction from their everyday lives. And it also is supposed to be challenging at the same time. And that's a weird friction between what science fiction, fantasy, comic books, the, the things that we love and generally define as nerd do is that they both, like, you hear your friends that you love, but then also we're going to give you some challenging ideas. Uh, and, oh, I'm sorry, Paul, do you need to take a phone call? <laughs> Do you still have that poor crewman who's from? <laughs> Just turn it into the office, you weirdo. I've been Craig calling the captain all night long. Actually, you have to run off and, and start getting things ready for comedy night, so I'm going to turn over the pen to Matt Fraction. And what about the microphone? You can give the microphone, I'm going to give the microphone. Uh, should I just tear this thing up? No, no. No, no. We're, no, no, no. no. It's, it's, okay. It's so we, we'll solve this now. It's a living document. You guys have 20, 20, 20 Okay, so it's... Um, this. This... Um, oh, wait. There's a... There's, a, there's Okay. So I'm going to do the jackets. Um, there is certainly lots of acceptance of the principle that you can love whatever you want. I think that's fantastic. But in this room, there is a core curriculum, right? There is a sense that we all, all know Star Wars, we all know Star Trek, we all know, at least to a certain level, we all know Harry Potter, we all know, um, and... Where does Blake Seven figure into this? <laughs> um, so, I mean, like, like, there's not, while there's a definition of nerd that's great, which is love what you love, there is also a community of nerds that love some very familiar things, right? And so ignoring that in the discussion means that what we get is, Amy, you are, you're a five, right? You're a five on that scale. And you don't feel you're a five. It feels wrong. Yeah. So you have to go somewhere. You have to say um, at least that 
you have to watch Star Trek once. There's got to be a base coach. So let's. And, and, and is that, but, but, the gatekeeping is absolutely a problem. But I think, I think saying um, these are the things that we love and let us tell you about them and perhaps you will love them too. And here are some things you might want to know that will make it easier for you to interact in these circles. Isn't really gatekeeping. It's bringing yeah, you yes, just yeah, recruiting. That's right, that's right. So let's, let's actually, we've got to have some uh, time for the audience. And, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you, Mike, for last. Okay. So let's let's start. Let's just get a little list together. You want to? Do you have anything, Kelly, that you, you want to throw out that I can write down for Amy to, to check out? Uh, uh, superhero Matt Fraction's Hawkeye. Yes, yeah. I'm biased. <laughs> Matt? Um, we're going to straight up comic books. Uh, uh, I would look at uh, a comic book called Stumptown by Greg Rucka, which is, uh, which is, which is, which is, which is a, a private eye book set in Portland, uh, which I'm a fan of, uh, but very, very much in the wheelhouse of, uh, of your last sort of binge read. Now, are these books, are these comic books that are, that she can walk into a room and say, I know these, and people will embrace her as a nerd based on that knowledge? I think there are people that be everywhere that like, you're a girl, you don't read comics, right? I think there are people that say, you oh, you read a Marvel comic, that's not comics, or, you know, I think like, so there would be, be, be dicks everywhere. Rather than a reading list for comics, it would be more like, here's what you need to know. There's DC, there's Marvel, there's Image, and then there's the rest of them. DC and Marvel are shared universe superhero books. DC is was started by sci-fi guys. It's it's uh, gods on high looking down. Marvel was started by guys who couldn't work anywhere else, and it's straight up guys looking up. Those are the big differences there. Yes. <laughs> No, I mean, that's actually Max. I, I should, I'm repeating his line. Okay. Um, I would say the, the, the science fiction and fantasy field has some really great places to start, which are the Hugo and Nebula lists, except last year's Hugo. <laughs> so, well, Just a boy? Obviously. And my books are in conversation with the rest of the genre. It's a better idea to start somewhere else, honestly. I would not recommend my books as a starting point. No, I would recommend something like and buy Lattie's. them, but don't read them. <laughs> later, later, later. But I would recommend is, is okay. So start with the Nebula lists for like maybe the last five years. With the, the just the Nebula list for the last five years. Let's avoid the Hugo discussion entirely for now. Um, so start with that. Once you've done that, then you can read my books. Um, and, but if you want a, a, a recent example of what you should, what the, the, the field is doing now and what kind of everybody's talking about right now, I would start with the ancillary, um, the, oh god, what's the name of the series? Imperial Ratch. The Imperial Ratch Trilogy by Anne Lecky. First book of which is Ancillary Justice. Ancillary so, Justice. Yeah. The fact that a bunch of people filled in your sentence for you yes. is yes. a clear indicator yes. that you're on the right track. John. Can you give us uh, something from uh, film and or television? No, I'm just here to talk about Hamilton. <laughs> I, would listen, I would listen to Hamilton. Yes. <laughs> and then call me so we can talk about it. <laughs> You've seen it twice. See, well, listen, listen to it again with me tonight. <laughs> Hamilton party in your room. Okay. My my my, uh, my son decided not to go parasailing with me yesterday, and so I just brought my earbuds and was listening to Hamilton. And at one point, was wandering around this island, having parasailed and lost my family, not totally minding. And someone stopped me and like, "Oh, are you okay?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm listening to Hamilton." And they're like, "It's so good!" <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me that you were listening to Hamilton while parasailing. <laughs> uh, uh, I would have. There was a dude with me, and I thought it would. <laughs> well done. Now, uh, before we turn this over to the audience, uh, Wait, what about Mike? He's never Mike right? has something very special planned. Uh, yes, Mike. Uh, Amy, you might be interested to know that another level that I think uh, qualifies you for nerddom is um, your interest in puzzles. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, well, yeah. let's go let's, let's start there. So tell us about your crypto crossword. Well, I mean, you can't. <laughs> okay. So, everyone knows what a crossword puzzle is. Approximately one eighth of one percent of the population knows what a crypto crossword is, right? So, crypto crossword comes from the British crossword style, which involves anagrams and, and uh, hidden words and transposals and all sorts of other crazy things. Nonsense. And very few people can do them. And so, since you do them, you're geekier than anyone uh, in the field, right? So, so on a puzzle level, you're on a ten. So that's our, that's our first uh, deck of DC. Yeah, that's our first deck of DC. Deck of DC. <laughs> so, we do the cryptic crosswords, but there is there is a game that you have never played as far as there, there, Yeah. And uh, I'm wondering if we can set up. Well, I'm curious. So, I mean, there are some, like I said, there should be some cultural touchstones. There should be Star Trek, there should be Harry Potter, there should be lots of things. There should be Dungeons and Dragons. He's a strict, uh, strict constructionist. <laughs> I, I am the living incarnation of Antonin Scalia. <laughs> Let's change that today. Oh, no, no. I, I, I've no. remedied things since. So, I got asked to do one thing. I'm going to do it. Okay. Um, so, I'm very frightened right now. <laughs> I think you're about to be jumped in. We've all filled pillowcases with 27. No, it doesn't leave a mark. It's great. The, the reason Dave came to me and said he wanted to fix you, I don't think he used those words, was. Uh, that you hadn't played Dungeons and Dragons, which seems a shame. So I made some characters. Specified. I actually had a black one. I actually have a black one. Pretty sure I have this outfit at home. Yes. Why, is my, why is my character white? That seems a little on the nose. It does. Uh, have you met us? <laughs> so you, uh, yeah. So I'm a barbarian. <laughs> tell them, tell them who you are. Go ahead, John. You want to start? I'm Father Clementine. <laughs> I'm a 13th level human cleric. Again, very human normal. Right on the nose. <laughs> yeah. My spell is dispel okay. magic. <laughs> My magic is bank magic disappear. <laughs> My saving throw is negative ten. <laughs> I'm Crumpo the Loud. I am a twelfth level human barbarian. My weapon is a plus two axe of death. I fucking love this. Oh my god. I have a saving throw of minus eleven. Annalisa Elvenstone, 13th level Elf Ranger, weapon plus 8 eye poking. Uh, okay. 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 Wait, 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 Thank you. I've changed my white male paladin well into a black woman. You can't tell because it's curly hair. Um, she's got some. She's got. She's got some decent shoes. Nice shoes. She's got petty going on under the shoes. You can't tell. Anyway, um, so she is sir. Well, whatever you want. She is sir. She is sir Cavalcade, the true fourteenth level human paladin. Weapon plus five holy sword saving throw minus twelve. I am Alfonso the Strange, a fifteenth level gnome 
some sorcerer get doy. Uh, my spell is a fireball, which is a 10 d6, the same third negative, 13 minus 13, depending on uh, how you prefer to say it. So, Dungeons and Dragons is a role-playing game, I assume, and so uh, this wouldn't work if we didn't actually play in character. So, um... What? Does that mean? Just, I don't you understand. Must, you must embody the character. You must, you must... A sexy elf. Yeah. Sure. But we don't have alignment. Oh, that's true. We don't have any alignments. We can't do this. Well, we also only have ten minutes. We have to do it. You don't know. I might decide to be a chaotic neutral pilot. Now, now purity tests come in. <laughs> Look, if you can't handle that. Okay, so, um, sure. So, uh, you're in a dungeon. Oh no! See, Um Wait, this requires acting. <laughs> oh my well, god! Playing, playing, not acting. Playing. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll roll. How about that? Hey, you just play yourself. I'll, I'll roll. I'm I mean, angry. Oh, okay. so. <laughs> god damn it! Get me out of this dungeon. <laughs> So Do I poke the cleric in his eye with my eye? <laughs> wow, motherfuck, why? <laughs> I'm just trying to help over here. Didn't feel very helpful. <laughs> so Dungeons and Dragons also uh, has a key element, which is that you must have adversaries. Um, so I will play one. Uh, I will play the classic adversary of Dungeons and Dragons, the Beholder. Um, yes. The Beholder is a giant... You're gonna start with that, man. Come on. The Beholder, what? Why are you gonna start us off with that? You're super powerful characters. You can stab it with my sword. That's what we do. That's great. So, uh, I need some help. Uh, can I have, uh, five volunteers? Can you just stand up for a second? Come, come join me. Come join me. Come on. Five people. Five people. Please. Dude's all right. We can count to five! We only have five minutes, so let's get to the floor. We are five! I need you guys to stand behind me. Stand behind me and pretend to be my eye stalks. Just wave your hands in the air. Okay? Alright, so I'm, I'm a scary one. I'm a kid, so nice to meet you. And, uh, well, I, I, I can honestly say I've never seen anything more terrifying. <laughs> okay, so, uh, um, how about this one right now? How this works is, can I have a 20-sided die that's there? Sure. Thank you. It would be amazing, by the way, if Ted was just gone. No, no, it's good. Let's just drop in this bomb. And okay, so, each of you make a saving throw against the disintegration ray that I'm going to... Uh, okay, so what did you get? Subtract your, your saving throw? So what did you get? Get a one. Okay, you're disintegrated. <laughs> uh, a two. Okay, so you're disintegrated. Um, what am I doing? Amy? What'd you get? Eight. What, what's your mom? I have a plus twelve. You got a twenty! Yeah. <laughs> no, you're fine. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm just in. <laughs> oh, you're disintegrated. I'm sorry. Uh, you're just disintegrated. Uh, it's, just, it's just best that way. Why? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah. so and now you need to now you need to poke me in the eye. Um, so, I have all these eyes. You have to roll. You have to roll the die. I love your big... You don't, you don't understand what you actually knows how to hit people. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not worried about that much. No, 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 nine. Nine plus what? Uh, I'm not sure how this it's works. What kind of... Oh, yeah, plus eight. What makes this a great yeah. nerd show is yeah. that you're blocking the audience. I know, I love that. You might love nerd, but shit, you really believe you were in a dungeon. And so you succeed and you kill the beholder. <laughs> you are, you are. <laughs> so if you play Dungeons and Dragons, I don't see how you cannot be a nerd. <laughs> oh my god, you did it. Yeah, we all did it. I really do apologize. I thought it would be nice to, to have some heated back and forth about that, but you, we will be walking around the boat, so please okay. feel free to keep the uh, about those things. Thank you so much, Mike.
Thank you, Matt and Kosu. Thank you, Nora. Thank you, John Andrew. And welcome, Amy.